Well, my name is John Grant, and uh, I've been involved in music for most of my life. I started out as a child uh, playing classical piano growing up in Michigan in the States. And uh, I'm a child of the 70s and the 80s. And so those are my two favorite periods, and I think I'm always sort of, you know, while trying to take advantage of modern technology and modern options, and um, I think those are the two uh, decades that I'm always trying to distill into my own sound. So that's sort of where my music comes from. I think it is a good idea to work with uh, a diverse range of artists. But, I mean, more importantly, I think it's important for me to work with whoever I feel like I want to work with at a given time, no matter what their background is, you know, and no matter what other people think. I mean, as somebody who's definitely spent a large portion of his life worried about other people's opinions, I think one of the things that it's good about me, or great about me and my music, is that I seem to be able to forget all of that when I go into the studio, at least, and not be worried about any of that when I'm, you know, working on my own art, which I, I don't think there's any place for taking other people's opinions into consideration when it comes to your own art. So I think, um, and plus as you become, you know, an adult and realize that it doesn't matter what people think, <laughs> you know, then, you know, that's a good thing too. But when I was younger, that definitely wasn't the case, you know. I had an invitation to go to Iceland, which had been on my radar for decades since I fell in love with the Sugar Cubes in, in, in 87, when their first record came out. And I sort of, you know, had seen, you know, pictures of the landscape. You know, I came from a lower middle class background in the States. And I think I wanted to latch onto something exotic to make myself feel smarter. I think that was sort of what it was at the beginning. But then at the same time, it was um, attached to my love for music as well. So I feel like a lot of it comes from my love for music. The North Atlantic Flux, um, the way that it came about was um, simply that uh, I was approached um, and asked if I would be interested in being a part of it or curating this festival. And um, some of my favorite people in the world uh, come from Hull. In particular, there's three that come to mind. Um, Cozy Fanny Tootie um, from Throbbing Gristle and Chris and Cozy. And I, I first fell in love with Chris and Cozy. There's uh, Tracy Thorne. You know, I've been listening to everything but the girl since the 80s. The acts that I've chosen for the festival are basically people that I admire, simply, because of their music and their... Uh, I'm, I'm very into electronic music. The three headline groups that we have are Gus Gus, and Gus Gus have been a big part of my life since they came on the scene in the 90s. When I moved to Iceland, I met Biggie Vera, one of the members of Gus Gus. He ended up being the producer, uh, the co-producer, and um, of my second record, second solo record, Pale Green Ghosts. And then uh, Wrangler is another one of the bands that are gonna be headlining. And um, that band is made up of a gentleman named Phil Winter, a guy who goes by the name Benj, who has a lot of solo work as well. He's a, a real sound smith when it comes to uh, modular synths. And, and then one half of the band, Cabaret Voltaire, who are huge heroes of mine. And then the third, uh, the band, is another one of my favorite Nordic electronic acts. He goes by the name of Lindstrom, and he hails from just outside of Stavanger, Norway. I would say he's become a master of his sound, and, you know, I was very excited when I found out that he agreed to do this festival because he's one of my favorites. So we have, a, you know, an incredible lineup coming together of music that's just um, close to my heart. I'm really excited about it.